Good evening, Jay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our second Leaders in Action episode entitled Life Insurance Companies Braving the Crisis Together. Our special guest tonight is Mr. Benedict Sison, the president of CLIA or the Philippine Life Insurance Association and the CEO and country head of Sun Life Financials. Maayong gabi, Mr. IB, at maayong gabi sa ating mga audience, lalong-lalo na sa lahat ng Visayan-speaking viewers out there. Yes, this is our second episode and really looking forward to another real talk with our special guest for tonight. But before we proceed, gusto muna naming magpasalamat sa lahat ng mga nag-join sa amin sa aming maiden episode last week no, with no less than Commissioner Dennis Funa himself as our guest. Umabot na po tayo ng more than 1,000 views ng aming maiden episode, all because of your support. Uh, yes, uh, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat for feedback and suggestions. And thank you for liking, following, and sharing our pages. Of course, we want to thank Commissioner Funa for all of the initiatives that strengthen the industry, for encouraging us to just continue uh, working hard and, of course, reminding us that the future is very bright. Yes, and after hearing no, from Commissioner Funa last week on the landscape on insurance industry, tonight we will have naman the opportunity to listen and know more about how the different insurance companies led by their respective CEOs are braving the crisis together. And we will also hear how they are maximizing the different opportunities that have emerged and continue to emerge. Kaya mga friends, wag na nating patagalin. Help me welcome our very special guest for tonight, PLIA President, Mr. Benedict Sison. Hi, Benedict. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. First off, thank you, uh, Benedict, for accepting our invite. Ha? Excited na sila to hear from you and of course uh, from the other CEOs through PLIA po anong ginagawa ninyo together to brave this tough environment. Sige. Yes. Good evening again, Mr. Benedict, and thank you for joining us tonight. But before anything else, congratulations on your re-election, your second <laughs> term as PLIA president. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, I'm really very glad to be here and tell you more about what the Philippine Life Insurance Association of the uh, is really doing. It's really a major thing for us, you know. And PLIA has actually served as a very productive venue for collaboration among its members. Siguro, Ivy and uh, Jay, if you don't mind, let me just give you a brief on what PLIA is all about. Yes, Happy please. Go ahead. Yeah. So PLEA is really the industry association of the life insurance companies in the Philippines. And probably not a lot of people know that as per IC regulation, if you are an active life insurance company in the Philippines, you are mandated to be a member of PLEA. And also yearly, when you renew your, your company certificate of authority, membership in PLEA is one of the requirements. Right, right. Yeah. And there are 31 members of PLIA at the moment. And I'm very right. proud to say that PLIA has a very strong partnership with the Insurance Commission in advancing the expansion and the strengthening of the whole insurance industry. And one of the missions of uh, PLIA actually includes uh, serving as a vehicle through which uh, problems, issues, concerns that's really common to the life insurance industry may be threshed out, may be determined, may be resolved in the common interest of all the members. Okay. And, uh, and as you oh, know... Go ahead. Uh, go, ahead. go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, yeah. You know, uh, as I mentioned, yeah, diba? PLIA has uh, 31 members at the moment. And just to let you know that uh, PLIA is actually, the membership is actually categorized into three groupings based on portfolio size and net worth. And each of these groupings has three representatives in the board. And PLIA is actually run by a board made up of nine directors. And I would say, you know, uh, IB, that uh, the current structure of PLIA is really very good because it's, 
is very inclusive. It allows for the flow, the free flow of diverse viewpoints uh, during board meetings, during board deliberations, and during uh, decision making. And uh, as you mentioned, I've been re-elected as the president. And our vice president is Rahul Hora, who's uh, from the CEO of AXA. The secretary is uh, Jeannie Desiderio Garcia of uh, Country Bankers. Then uh, treasurer is Peter Cuyuto. And then we have other five other board members who are directors like Kelvin Ang from Philam, Rico Bautista from Ethical Life, Jaime Fernandez from Beneficial Life, Jose Lee from Philippine International Life, and Dominic Smith from uh, True Life. And uh, the day-to-day -day operations of LIA is actually managed by a general manager, and his name is Mr. George Nina. So that's what LIA is really all about. Well, again, a uh, very clear explanation, very clearly also, that all of the companies are properly represented. No? What okay. I also know about PLIA is your very close coordination with the IC. So during this pandemic, uh, Benedict, what were the things that you worked out with the IC so that the concerns of the industry uh, will be properly addressed during this pandemic? Yeah, so during this pandemic, we've really worked hand in hand with the insurance uh, commission to address the needs of the industry and the insuring public. Maybe at this point, if you don't mind, I'd share with you what I would say are the top three uh, biggest concerns of PLIA or of the industry at the onset of the pandemic yes. and which ones have been resolved and which ones continue to linger on as an issue of the industry. So ang pinakauna dyan, IB and J, it's the lack of client engagement as a result of the lockdowns that actually restricted the mobility of the agents. Yeah. Yung pangalawa dyan is kwan, the slower growth in the number of agents. Mm -hmm. Kasi nga yung lockdown also affected the licensing and recruitment process. And I'll tell you more about this shortly. Yung third issue that we face actually at the onset of the pandemic is how do we continue servicing our clients, especially for insurance companies that had challenges basically shifting their current operating models to fit the lockdown situation. So yun yung pinakatatlong issues. So punta tayo dun sa pinakauna, yung, uh, yung it restricted the mobility of our yes, agents. Yes, of agents, correct. Oh, correct. Oh. So obviously, I'm sure you can relate to this, yung inability of advisors to move around and sell impacts the advisor's income, di ba? And potentially yes. the company's productivity and consequently the industry's uh, growth. Um, we're very thankful that IC immediately granted yung temporary authority to conduct digitally assisted remote selling to address this concern. And the good news is that eventually the IC allowed digitally assisted remote selling to become a permanent solution. So ibig sabihin yan, pandemic or no pandemic, digitally assisted remote yeah. selling, dungeon na siya. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Tapos, to answer your earlier question, I be on... What role did PLIA play in this one? PLIA actually played a very significant role in convincing the insurance commission to allow digitally enabled selling to become a permanent solution. Diba? And as a consequence, ito nga yung kwan eh, uh, uh, unexpected consequence, it has actually ignited the digital transformation of the yes. industry. Mas diba? napabilis. Oh. Mas napabilis, diba? It's supported. So, Kasi alam mo naman, companies had to prioritize digitalization you know, to address the concerns of, kasi nga, hindi mobile ng mga tao, so may logistical support concerns, back office processes, agency training, service delivery, etc. And in the process, IB and J, of digitalization, companies quickly realize, uy, may benefits pala itong digitalization, di ba? There's yes. the benefit of convenience, operational efficiency, at isa pang benefit na na-realize nila sa digitalization is yung, alam mo, borderless yung reach mo, yes. di ba? Correct, kung may kliyente ka yes. sa Davao, hindi ka na kailangan, at nasa Manila ka, you don't have to travel to Davao just to meet with your client. Ngayon, borderless na eh. Digitalization can make it happen. Di ba? So yun, na-close yung issue yun, di ba? Yung second concern is something that I think we should dwell on, di ba? This is with regards to the Continuance by the IC of uh, conducting agents' exams. Exams, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. So, alam mo naman, di ba? Uh, para malicense 
ka as an agent, you really need to undergo examinations that are administered by the insurance commission. Yes. Okay. yes. Yeah. Etong examinations na to are normally done in a physical setting, in a physical examination center. Obviously, because of the pandemic, hindi kakayanin, di ba? It has made physical examination challenging. Okay, di ba? With the pandemic, ang nangyari, the insurance industry was caught with no examination alternative that could be administered remotely. So recruitment really, wala. Na, no oh, recruitment. exactly. So yung, I'm sure you've heard of this, uh, yung, uh, IC kasi has this on-site agents computerized examination. Yeah. Yeah. Yun, na-discontinue yun nung, kwa, nung uh, March 2020 when uh, ECQ was declared. So that was discontinued in March 2020. The good news is a year after, in March 2021, of this year yun, ha, IC was able to restart their off-site pen and paper examination. Kaya lang, <laughs> last April, it had to be suspended again because yeah, of the declaration of another ECQ, di ba? Oh. So anong nangyari dyan, the only remaining available licensing facility talaga is the recently launched online ACE ng IC. ACE stands for Agents Computerized Examination. Ang catch nga lang dito sa online ACE is that ang capacity niya is limited to 75 examinees yeah. per day. Very so, limited. Oh, so I if you calculate 75 per day times 5, so 375 per week, times 52, that's yeah. less than 20,000 uh, oh, examples right. per. So it, it's, really, it's really an issue. And we has raised this issue with uh, the Insurance Commission. You right. need but to expand this yeah. capacity. Yeah. yeah. But, last week, la, last week uh, that was brought to the commissioner and said naman, in fairness, sinabi niya that he's very conscious of the problem and they're doing their best to address it. No? Pero I think your constant uh, coordination with them will really make it a lot faster to be resolved, no? Yeah, that's very true. And, and when, when the insurance commission has been very receptive. In fact, yeah. they're really forging ahead to digitalizing yeah. as much as possible. Kaya lang syempre may mga constraints which uh, Commissioner Funa worked on. So we really yeah. have to work collaboratively. Yes. Uh-huh. So, so we're working on that. Alam mo naman kasi uh, with additional agents, It really impacts the industry, di ba? Kasi new agents could bring in a, a continuing flow of fresh leads, help yes. increase production right. capacity. Right. So, so ang nangyari nga, so what happened was yung temporary licensing facility was initially allowed, di ba? Kaya lang, alam mo naman nangyari. It was Uh-oh. discontinued in November 2020. Yeah. You heard about that. And the yes. reason for that is... Uh, They had may, to, may, there was this subsequent rec- reconsideration by IC of its legal basis. May legal issue yata. Oh, right. oh, oh, oh. So, nangyari dyan, uh, just to share with you, as a result of this, IC shifted its focus instead to ensure that online examinations be made available sooner. So they really know that they have to do this sooner. Yeah, yeah. Tama ka naman, they're really working hard on it. Oh. Good, good, good. Oh. Now, yung, now, now if, I, if you don't mind, I'll go into the third concern. That yes, service. Yes. Uh, ito yung at the onset of the pandemic, uh, ang concern namin doon is paano na lang yung mga companies, especially those not readily prepared to support a work-from-home setup, yeah. how, how may they be allowed to have an... So we've requested na sana they be allowed to have an online skeletal work skeletal frame uh, workforce so they can continue servicing policyholders and potential uh, customers. So ang ginawa ng video dyan, we requested IC to make a representation sa IATF mm. to include employees mm. of insurance companies mm. Mm. para maklasify tayong mga advisors natin and our employees employees as essential frontline workers of oh, the financial right. sector. Yun. Oh. Di ba kasi sa totoo naman, insurance companies are generally health insurance providers din naman, di ba? So, yes. Uh, di ba? So, lo and behold, you were eventually classified as essential workers <laughs> of the financial sector. So, so, so thus, we were, allowed to, we were allowed to have on-site a skeletal force to cater to the needs of the clients for health services and for the settlement of claims. So to literally pa rin yung operations natin. And that was done because we collaborated with uh, the insurance, CLIA collaborated with the insurance 
a commission to make it happen. So, meron mga na-resolve na issues. Ang lingering na lang ngayon talaga yung licensing and recruitment. Yeah. But that's not yeah. to say that it's not being addressed. It is being addressed. Yeah, top, that's top in the consciousness of the of the IC. As sabi mo nga, uh, the more agents, the more we'll be able to increase our uh, penetration ratio. No? Uh, Jay, your, your question to... Ano, to, uh, to it, it's good to note, no, uh, Mr. Benedict, that despite uh, the challenges no, that the industry faced, especially during the initial stage of the COVID, the industry still managed to post 5.9% growth last year despite the pandemic. From players' point of view, what can you say no, are the factors that contributed to the growth, no, to this kind of performance? Okay. Uh, you know, believe it or not, there's a silver lining with regards to this uh, pandemic. Uh, in fact, our outlook uh, for the insurance industry is really very positive. Biruma na grow pa nga, di ba? And uh, we see a lot of opportunities from the fact that because of the pandemic, people realize their vulnerability during this pandemic and have recognized yes. the value of having insurance protection against the threats of uh, their, to their life and to their health. So it basically heightened the awareness as well as the need for life insurance. So that's, that's definitely one. In other words, the uncertainty surrounding the pandemic uh, has increased the demand for life insurance. So that's that's one. In fact, you'll see more people trying to upgrade their uh, insurance protection. And that is brought about by this pandemic. So that's a silver light lining there. That was the other one. What has helped, I think, is the accelerated adoption of uh, technology. It kind of generated a lot of uh, optimism. Yeah. You see... Diba? You see an increasing number of companies now using electronic applications, e-signatures, yeah. yes. uh, electronic policy yeah. delivery. Diba? Yeah. So this is self. Eh. This transition to technology basically enables the industry to thrive in this uh, COVID times. Diba? There are other industries who who actually did not do as well as the insurance industry. Yes, diba? yes. So, certainly. so yeah. those are uh, so yung a big factor din para sa akin ay yung digitally assisted spelling of policies because they appeal also to the growing uh, tech savvy population the and younger yeah. population uh, the young, oh. millennials no. yeah. Uh, yeah and you know what itong digitalization really prepares us for the future that's why we're really very optimistic sa insurance industry about uh, what is to come because i think it will really drive the growth in premium as well as boost uh efficiency. That's why we believe that the what has happened in 2020 will continue on in 2021 and even uh, further and even further. I think it's important that you highlight the, the positives no? amidst all of this uncertainty. Matanong kita, alam ko as CEOs and your co-CEOs, no? uh, the, their, their roles and their jobs have become much more challenging because of the pandemic. So, you need to increase the morale of your people. But at the same time, you have to drive production. Tama? And uh, tayo sa mga Pilipino, you have to make sure you, you have to show empathy, yung puso. Pero at the same time, you still have to deliver your numbers, correct? So the question is, how did you, uh, companies in the industry, balance people care with expectation pa rin of delivering your growth uh, targets? Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, this is a very good question. I be yung balancing people and bottom line, di ba? So let me tell you what the generally, I believe all companies uh, in, in the insurance sector made sure that people who needed to work on site had safe working environments in their offices. That's one. Next, they had, of course, uh, they had to be in compliance with the prescribed uh, safety protocols of uh, relevant government agencies like LGUs, for example. That was some companies even went to the extent uh, of providing transportation shuttle services and lodging accommodations to their people, to their employees. Others who are able to work from home naman were given logistical support in terms of hardware and in terms of connectivity support. So what I'm saying here is, uh, I think for the entire industry, bottom line is important, yeah. but people come first. Well, so that's, that's a very clear yeah. message that the industry sent to our people. 
the bottom line is important, but people come first. Uh, so um, you know, um, that's I how we balanced it. The, the, the unique thing about the industry is that we've got employees, but at the same time, we've got a distribution who are contractual, they buy an agency force. So Correct. what did the companies do also uh, to help and support their, their agency force or even the bank assurance sales force? Okay, yung, I'll start with one uh, from a from a, ano ba dito? from a company perspective, what has been done, okay? And I'll also share with you what has been done from an industry level, okay? So on an industry level, Clear was quite influential, di ba, in convincing the insurance commission to allow digitally enabled selling yeah. as a temporary solution to the inability of advisors to do face-to-face -face selling. In yeah. fact, nga, sabi ko kanina, after some time of favorably experiencing digitally enabled selling, Clea made the case with IC to make it a permanent selling method. And as a consequence, consequence it has ignited the digital transformation of the industry. So that's yeah. what uh, Clea has done for the distribution yeah. course, right? So at company level, naman, digital, because of this uh, ignited digitalization, digitalization Kasi at the company level had to be made quickly to address the concerns related to logistical support, processes, agency training, and service delivery. Yeah. As a result, companies quickly realized the benefits of uh, convenience, operational efficiency, and uh, borderless, uh, borderless reach. So ako, gusto ko lang sabihin dyan, uh, what are really the benefits of digitalization? It has really been a big help. And I would say that Efficiency in the, in the digital selling process has been one of the biggest help of digital technology. And because of this digital technology, we're able to present our messages in a much simple fashion, faster, much clearer yeah. fashion. So, we're really more in a more structured form through the use of Juan, di ba yung digital presentation decks and uh, infographics. Also, I'm thinking about digitalization because is it provides empowerment and convenience. Because yeah. now access to forms, procedural guides, yes. and uh, transactional requirements is now available online via client portals in company websites. At the point, the benefit uh, with digital support, advisors could now talk to more prospects in a day. Mm -hmm. And reach yes. out to more leads, mm -hmm. uh, overcoming yeah. limitation ng physical geography, time, and travel. So all this actually helped boost sales productivity and output. In fact, uh, I mean, this is uh, what's ironic about digitalization. What is ironic is that digitally assisted selling has enabled our advisors to communicate with their clients on an even more personal level. Kasi ano nangyari? Yung mga manual staff, na dati-dati spend a lot of time entering, data entry, etc. That's not all being done digitally. So now the advisor has more time to talk with the clients to really get to know the client better and develop a more personal uh, relationship. So that's really the ironic uh, benefit of uh, digitalization. I that's why that's yeah, that, that's very important for you to say kasi normally, ang takot ng ordinary advisor is that yung wala magiging ano na very impersonal di ba o yung mapapalta na sila where in fact what you're saying it's it enhances the ability to really communicate and do service no right Good. Uh, Not nice to hear mm -hmm. yeah yeah it becomes more personal tapos yung threat that uh, digitalization will replace advisors <laughs> that's not true the way we perceive uh, digitalization it's really an enabler for the advisors yeah, it will yeah. make them more productive and you know, Filipinos will still want to talk to somebody they trust, an That's advisor correct. that they trust. Yeah, all right, yeah. Jay. Yeah, it's very nice to hear, no, uh, Mr. Benedict, talagang how uh, digitally empowered na ngayon ang ating uh, agency force. Uh, something na hindi natin na isip, no, na mangyayare several. Uh, no years ago, no. Right. Uh, but also we saw, no, na. Pandemic gave us an, an opportunity no, to reaffirm yung purpose ng insurance and that is protecting our families and even businesses no, from unexpected risk. Um, Mr. Benedict, uh, can you share with us ano po yung mga policy holder focused 
initiatives no, na ginawa po ng mga member companies ng TRIA to somehow allay the fears and concerns of our insuring uh, public. No, medyo na mention niyo po kanina na ang yeah. isa sa naging challenge yung communication, no, reaching out to our clients because po maraming na lockdown. So, pa paano po ano po yung mga ginawa nating mga extra mile ba na ginawa ng mga kumpanya for their customers? Okay. So, uh, another very good question there, RJ. J, as an industry, the key message we actually delivered to the insuring public during this pandemic is actually, we remain constantly accessible. Yan yung message namin. We, re we remain constantly accessible. And this message was actually delivered to policyholders for their service requirements and to the general public for satisfying their queries about life and health insurance. And again, tala naman ako, digitalization and digital channels were actually used as an efficient medium to disseminate this message that we are constantly accessible. And the message was delivered quickly and to a wider reach. Of course, uh, this was much easier for companies that are ahead in their digital infrastructure. Yes, yes. The others who were not similarly situated had to urgently make adjustments in their operational capacity to be able to catch up. Diba? Kasi ngayon, digitalization before used to be an option. Now, yeah. it's the only it's option. It's yeah. the only option. Eh. The only option, yes. But it's the only option. Yun yung pagkakaiba. Eh. In fact, mm -hmm. if you don't mind, I'd like to share with you that at Sun Life, we were able to enable our clients to remain connected to their advisors by rolling out nga this digitally enabled selling process in view nga of the limitations imposed by this uh face to face uh, interactions mm -hmm. now uh, we, in, at Sun Life also we introduced this room or remote online medical examination remote kasi nga bawal yung face to face oh, yeah. 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 and because, and through this facility yung kwan, uh, accredited full time medical examiners perform online medical exams for prospective uh, clients mm -hmm. and like most uh, insurance companies we we, to the public, we extended the grace period for premium payments to 91 yeah. days during mm. the ECQ, diba? And insurance com a lot of com insurance companies did that. That was uh, other ways we basically given uh, or uh, given assurance to our uh, insurance public was uh, through our foundation. For example, we committed a sizable amount of money uh, for COVID-19 related uh, support, mm. like. Uh, providing medical supplies, PPEs to frontliners, providing life insurance coverage to medical frontliners, etc. So there were a lot of uh, proactive steps taken uh, by the industry to assure clients and the people in general that we are with them in these uh, trying times. That, that, that's good Again, to hear, like, Mr. Benedict, yeah. no, because mm -hmm. a client, no like me no uh would really love to hear no that all the insurance companies are putting our welfare no uh first also no so uh, thank you no for for sharing uh with us no all those uh, initiatives no mr ib uh, bilis naman ng oras gusto ko tatlong oras to pero ang bilis ng oras oh, eh dami na <laughs> oh hindi pa naman hindi pa naman um, ang bilis lang talaga ng oras pag magandang pinag-uusapan eh ha <laughs> Uh, during times of crisis, di ba, normally na ang kailangan is a more focused and coordinated approach. No? But as you've mentioned, there, were a lot, there are a lot of opportunities that came about. Pero opportunities that no single company can actually handle. So yeah. my question is, how has COVID made the companies who are competing against each other much more collaborative? Mas lalo bang napansin mo na mas lalo kayo nag-uusap-usap to address common concerns in the industry? Yeah. Okay. You know, that's really the role that PLEA played during this uh, pandemic. It really was a venue, productive venue for collaboration among its members. You know, akala ko nga eh, na because of this pandemic, because of this lockdown, hindi na tayo magkikita-kita. But believe it or not, the interaction among uh, PLEA members was actually heightened. We regularly do our board meetings. We constantly stay in touch via Viber, via 
uh, via WhatsApp and all the other uh, digital tools that are available, which made it closer for us because we have we all have a lot of uh, concerns that are really that really PLIA can help resolve for all the members. In fact, CEOs would call me because I'm the PLIA president and we try to address this and I present it to the board. These are issues shared yeah. with me. So it really naging mas collaborative and that's really the value of PLIA. And, and uh, it has served its purpose, kumbaga. Good, good. Very nice to hear again, no? Jay? Yeah. Oh, um, aside from the different green shoots no, that you have mentioned, na, na result, no, that benefited somehow the insurance companies, such as the in, in, in recruitment no because of the high unemployment no talagang makakatulong ang insurance companies no sa uh, sa recruitment no acceleration of the digital migration and the increased awareness no sa uh, insurance no ng mga tao Mr. Benedict meron ba kayo nakikita ang ibang mga opportunities or green shoots that uh will still benefit our uh, agency force considering that we're in, in, a, in an extended pandemic already? Yeah, I, I'd like to cover two points here. You, one, you, I hope you don't mind if I address the issue about unemployment. Uh, unfortunately, there's no available statistics on this one as to how many of those unemployed were successfully recruited by our industry as agents. Mm -hmm. But the general expectation is that companies would have taken advantage of the opportunity yes. presented with the unemployment situation, diba? Yeah. Kasi the yeah. unemployment situation created a ready pool of potential recruits for a career in the life uh, insurance agency, okay. diba? But actually, <laughs> one of the justifications made for the introduction of the temporary licensing facility was that it would make it easier for companies yeah, to, get, to yes. provide get alternative more. livelihood opportunities yeah. to those whose employment were negatively impacted by the yeah. pandemic. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Oh, oh. Yeah. I think uh, I just want to make mention yung, uh, how agency what agency leaders must be focusing on today uh, yeah. in the light of this yeah. pandemic. Diba? So you see, in this new normal, the, ang dami nang nagbago eh. Things are done differently. And uh, for me, the, the new dimension on how things are done differently now relates very much to the increasing influence of digitalization. So ako, so agency leaders really will need to get increasingly more adept at using the digital tools made available yeah. to them by their companies. Diba? They really should understand that doing things digitally will improve efficiency and generate uh, productivity gains. Yeah. Now, uh, that said, I think this is very critical, uh, IBNJ. Yung agency leaders brought about by digitalization should not come at the expense of our clients. Right. Sabi ko nga kanina, digital tools enable us to gather more data from our clients, which in turn enable us to better assess what financial products are really and truly needed by our clients for their financial security. The point I'm really making here is that we need to treat our clients fairly and realize with gratitude what an incredible amount of trust our clients are giving us when they provide us with their data. So I think as agency leaders, we must always strive to build on the trust the insuring public has bestowed on us as advisors because that trust could easily be destroyed with the digital yeah. tools yeah. that yeah. our agents have at their disposal if we are not careful. Yeah. I think it's very important. I think, again, no? Thank you for that very, very important and valid point. No? Uh, alam naman tayo sa insurance, eh, trust is mm -hmm. the, the highest point of what we do. No? Uh, again, as I was mentioning, uh, time flies so fast. Isa na lang tanong pa, para sa iyo, ha? akong gakalim sa akin. Uh, uh, what is one leadership principle that has guided you no, in your career that uh, you wish to share to the leaders? Okay. Ako yung plan, the stay focused on your purpose and your clients because that will really guide you in making the right decisions, especially during this pandemic. Like I mentioned earlier, 
there was a dilemma, should we take care of our people first or take care of the combine, diba? Yeah, yeah. It's expensive to take care of your people, but they matter, right? Yes. But the guiding principle we followed is that eh, stay focused on your purpose and stay focused on your people because they will guide you in making the right decisions. And that has helped us a lot. Thank you. Wow. Wonderfully, Thank you very wonderfully much, no, now. Mr. Benedict, for that uh, very inspiring uh, words nyo sa amin. No? <laughs> but, hindi pa tayo tapos. Um, medyo tapos na tayo sa serious part. So, we will go to the fun part already. Uh, we will invite <laughs> Mr. Benedict to do the fast talk with us. Uh -oh. Okay lang po ba yun? Sure, sure. <laughs> okay. So, I think uh, meron naman kayong idea how the fast talk works. So, uh, Umpisahan ko na. Very mga one-liner answer lang ko ito. Ha? So, let me start. What's your favorite song? Oh, what's my favorite? Umagang kay ganda. Wow. Uh, okay. Sample. Sample, sample. Sample, sample. Pwede ba? Sample. <laughs> uh, favorite brand of car? Oh, Toyota. Toyota. Blue Eagles or Green Archers? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, pwede ba maroon na lang? Alam mo. <laughs> pwede naman, accepted naman, that's fair. That's maroon, fair enough, maroon. Mr. Benedict, coming from UP, I know that that will be your answer. <laughs> uh, next one, quantity or quality? Quality always. Okay. Attitude or aptitude? Attitude. Okay. So, suit or barong Tagalog? Alam ko nasagot dyan. Alam ko nasagot. Oo nga eh. Alam na natin. Kitang-kita naman natin <laughs> si Mr. Benedict ngayon. Oh, next. So, mukhang obvious naman, no? Suit yan. No? <laughs> Sweet or spicy? Sweet. Sweet. And <laughs> lights on or lights off? Lights off. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Benedict. Yeah. You survived the fast talk, no? So thank you for uh, being so gay. Thank you. Again, thank uh, you. Benedict, thank maraming you. salamat uh, for your time and for your great inputs. No, it's really nice to hear that there's so much collaboration amongst companies and between you and the insurance commission. Uh, good luck to you, my dear friend, and give my regards to the rest of the CEOs uh, of the industry. Huh? Again, maraming salamat. Maraming salamat. Thank, Thank you again, Mr. Benedict. Hope eh, maimbita namin kayo ulit pa sa mga susunod namin na episodes. But for now, all the best po sa PLIA. God bless all the efforts that you are doing for the entire agency force no, and the entire uh, industry. Bye po and stay safe. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Thank Anna. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thank you. Wow. Another engaging and inspiring sharing from our very special guest, Mr. Benedict. Nakakatuwa lang, no? nakakahappy lang to know how uh, COVID, no? how the pandemic has strengthened the unity and collaboration among the different insurance companies and how the respective CEOs made efforts to reach out no? and uh, help their people, policyholders, employees, and uh, distribution no and uh, at the same time they are mindful no of the need for delivery no of business results pero gustong-gusto ko yung sinabi niya no dalawa yung gustong-gustong sinabi niya na yes bottom line is important no but people will always come first and the second one no about naman sa mga policy holders natin yung sinabi niya we will be constantly be accessible for you. No? So, uh, ito yung talagang me medyo nag-strike sa akin. How about you, Mr. IB? I know super nakarelate ka kay Mr. Benedict being a former CEO and a former PLIA president. What is your one major key takeaway from his sharing? Siguro before that, gusto ko lang paalala sa mga viewers that you have to go after your goals. Because as you have seen, CEOs have your back, no? I think uh, CEOs are like mothers with so many children. And each of her kids trying to pull her skirt to get her attention. 
all mothers love their children. Kaya lang, she has to make a decision kung sino ang una niyang kakargahin and to give comfort. She has to prioritize. In like manner, CEOs like to make sure that they take care of all stakeholders. But kailangan din nilang mag-prioritize. They will do their best to make things happen. So they need our understanding. Bottom line, let's trust the CEOs because they mean well. That's true. Very well said, uh, Mr. Ib. At this point, we'd like to invite our viewers no, to also share your one key takeaway from our episode tonight. Please do write them down on our comment section below. Uh, thank you again for uh, spending your Thursday evening with us. Next week, we will have a live interview with our special guest. Mr. I.B., can you fill us in with uh, about what's happening next week? Next week, we will have another enriching conversation. This time with the president of GAMA, Ms. Susan Lee. Susan is also the numero uno agency manager of Sun Life Financials. Together, we will hear from Susan in her capacity as GAMA head, how the association and you, the leaders, are leading and thriving under this challenging environment. Looking forward to our live interview with Ms. Susan. Please do join us again next Thursday. Thank you and please continue to follow and share our Facebook and Instagram pages. Together, let us continue to build and grow our community of successful agency leaders. So it's our date next week, Thursday, May 27, 8 p.m. here in... Leaders in Action. Real Leaders. Real Stories. Real Talk. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.